Stacey J. And I'm Chuck Durant. Welcome to part two with Harlan Hogan. That's right. You look got, at oh, me. Oh, look at that. You guys ready to win some headphones? I'm telling you, I have these in my booth at home. Yep, you they do. They are VIP for your ears. Absolutely. They are so comfy, cozy, and look at the case and the travel case. You know I love my QVC moments. Can't Beautiful. Stand it. Mm. Oh, leather. Yeah. Um, so you need these. VoiceOverEssentials.com. They have other great stuff too. Absolutely. Try to enter to win these, and even if you don't, it's so worth the value to get a pair of yourself. Absolutely, so. without a doubt. Okay, ready? Let's, Let's talk, talk to, to Harlan. Harlan. So wait, I have to know, do you still have any of the blue cubes left or were you able to sell all 48,000? You know what honestly would happen? And, and are they will, used for laundry? Like, this will make it sound nicer than I am, okay? <laughs> I had maybe 20 of them here and I got an email from a nun who was doing work in Africa and they oh. were recording wanted to record interviews with people in Africa that they had helped and all of this stuff. And she couldn't afford the pro, which is all I had. It was an alternative at the point. I didn't have the plush yet. And she wondered if there was anything I could do. And I said, how many do you need? I think she wanted 10. I said, it's your lucky day, sister. I'm sending you 10. There's no charge. Oh, so, look know. at you. Um, so I got rid of Sweet kid. <laughs> and you have been blessed ever since. Look at you. All those things you're reading about Harlan on the internet, don't believe him. Yeah, he's a nice they're guy. all lies. The truth is he's a <laughs> sweetheart. Okay, uh, wait. I'm, be, I'm a little geeking out here a second. Okay. I want to go back to the mixer phase. Can you say how much it's going to be? How is it available? Is there a pre-order situation? Because I know it's coming out sometime. Is it, isn't it this month or in July? Hoping. Hoping? Hoping. It's very tough Summer. in a new product, by the way. Yeah. yeah. You, you, even though you import... You know, then you when it's new, they all everybody wants to look at it and the right. duty and and if it's a like you know everything, the the duty rules for importation are pretty much like reading a patent. They're very complex. They're, yeah. The wording is very dated. Mm -hmm. I know when I had my mechanical stopwatches that I gave away and also I sell. Um, the big thing is what if there's a battery in it, it's much more expensive. If you call it a watch, they want to know what the case is made of and how many jewels are in it. So luckily, I had somebody, I got a broker, because you pretty much need one. And they said, oh, no, no, it's not a watch. It's not a stopwatch. It's a timer. <laughs> it's ah. a mechanical timer. Your duty will go way down. I have a friend that imports shoes, and he said, you know when you buy, like, flip-flops, and sometimes they have, like, a fiber in them? in addition to the rubber, mm. they don't do that to be green. They do that to have less of the rubber because the more of that rubber, the higher the, the duty is. Oh, interesting. Uh, so it's actually filler that they throw in there to keep so the cost down. So you think it's down. fashion, but it's actually <laughs> function. <laughs> anyway, so the mixer phase okay. with the charger and all of that stuff is going to be five ninety five. Okay. Um, as I was saying earlier to you guys, I think, you know, we're, I know what happened when at one point we ran out of Mike Pork Pros and people yeah. were buying yes. them on eBay for like four and five hundred dollars, you mm -hmm. know. Um, so I think these will go really quick. If you, I will be selling them, other people will be selling them too. It just it doesn't. And, I, and Michael is very good about map pricing, meaning you can't undercut it. I mean, he right. it's going to be what it's going to be. Which yeah. I like. I mean, I don't mind competing, but I hate it when some big guy can come in and, and you know, say, I, yeah, if I make $2 on it. No, mm -hmm. no, 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 no. So there'd be five ninety five. If you want to get on a waiting list, I started one a few weeks ago because we don't know. I wouldn't want to take pre-orders because we don't know exactly when they're coming. And that's, frankly, a lot of bookkeeping. You know, and then if somebody changes their mind, you send exactly. them money yeah. back. Yeah. I'd rather do sort of like the honors program. Uh, we literally have a sheet of yellow paper here somewhere with names on it. So you can email Terry, T-E-R-R-I dot Lee, L-E-E, -E, at VoiceOver Essentials. Terry takes care of all the customer service and all that. Okay. And just say, put my name on the list. And we're just doing them. We'll send you an email when they're available, if you've changed Very your cool. mind. Nice. So it's no obligation. You just get to put uh, in the queue. That's great. Yeah, that yeah. is beautiful. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And then in the meantime, people can do their research and decide if it's something they want. And But in the meantime, yeah. you're, you're in the in the line. Yeah, at least they know they can get one yeah. up to the number we have. So I think we have about 200 coming. So. Awesome. That's fantastic. Uh, what about we take a couple minutes here and give uh, trivia question number two oh. out oh, number to two. our viewers Number here. two. Okay, Harlan. 
Da da! You ready? Dramatic music plays in the background <laughs> somewhere. I know. Somewhere. somewhere. Is the name Harlan A. The name of a county in the state of Kentucky. B. Our guest's father's name. Mm. Mm. C. Combined with the last name Hogan by fewer than five people in the U.S. Ooh. Or D. The ever popular all three. Wow. <laughs> Any, so. <laughs> There's his silence again. Yeah, that's his this unexpected so silence. I'm so embarrassed I can't talk. I don't think he even knows the answer <laughs> to that one. Well, I, um, thought, I think I know the answer, but I can't. I, think I can't answer. Little, yeah, no, you can't. No, I know. That you would be cheesy. You cannot give it away. So that is your trivia question number two. There is one more question coming that you will need in order for you to send emails in. Are doing and that now? Win, no. Okay. And win those headphones, okay? Okay. So we're going to ask Harlan here another question. Harlan, you have been a part of some of the classic advertising slogans. Oh, yeah. Your voice has been heard on things like... If I say the product, are you going to do the slogan, or is that so Pomeranian jump through the hoop? <laughs> yeah, it is. Do a couple of them that you remember. Do you Hold remember on. the raid slogan? Oh, I yes. Would you like to? We won't pay your rate, so. Oh, you're are not we doing do it? performance rate? Oh well, raid is interesting actually because raid was Danny Dark's yeah. account for years. Mm. Raid. I mean, that's where he was. I as a kid, I couldn't do that on, on my heart. But they they. This is what was happening. This is why I was so lucky. We had three networks. You know, residuals were there. If you got a tagline, they might... I've had, had things that they would cut onto 12 spots wow. that ran network. Right. Danny Dark described voiceover as having a money truck back up to your driveway <laughs> every week. It wasn't always true, but occasionally it did. You know, you just open the envelope and go, wow. Yeah. <laughs> How did this happen? Now, if you were smart, you realized it's not going to continue. I think I, I was smart about that. Like, you know, be careful here yeah, because this is almost too away. good to be true. And pretty soon we saw the Jingle Singers tank. Yeah, and exactly. Then, and then we got cable and all the other media and all the rest of it. So it was a wonderful time. Yeah. Uh, but I, I got to go do Raid, and their tag was Raid. Kills bugs fast, kills bugs dead. <laughs> and even when I was young, they made me go, kills bugs dead, which was a throwback to Danny's room. Right. Yes. Well, it's not a jolly, yeah. it was not a jolly topic. Or as your Swiss director would say, no no more, not too much insane. No, not too much insane. <laughs> too much insane. Okay, then would we have the life cereal? Yeah. I still get money on that a lot of times because it's it's always one of the top ten commercials ever made. Oh, it's such a classic. Uh, we retract it three times. The fourth time I'm not on because we were in the middle of a strike. Oh, and yeah. And I couldn't do it. And, yeah, the money was important, but it was also – the pro there's, there is the only downside to establishing a really good rapport because I got a call from – a creative, and they just said, "Listen, is there any way we can do this?" I said, "I'm sorry, there isn't. I can't. I can't. I can't shave in the morning. I, I'd love to help you out, but I can't. Can't you cut together the old? No, they had done a thing where where Mikey was now grown up. That was yeah. pretty successful. But mm -hmm. they but they wanted the track. But yeah, yeah, life cereal from Quaker. The cereal even Mikey likes. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Okay, wait. I have to make you do a few more because I just I, I love this. And then you have, of course, Head and Shoulders. Two different things on Head and Shoulders. One was Head and Shoulders because you never get a second chance to make a first impression. Nah, I remember and, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's so uh, good. I'm and trying to think of the other one. And no, wasn't no, it the, the because that little itch should be telling you? And, oh yeah, yeah. Head and Shoulders because that little itch should be telling you. <laughs> I something. love that. Yeah, I know. That's yeah. so good. Man. I love it. Do you have any approach when you now do commercial auditions? Um, obviously. Well, first of all, let me say this. I mean, you've, you, you're in this 30-plus year career, going strong, God love you, and we're so happy for you. You've seen so many changes in the business. How do you stay clearly so on top of what's happening and, and you keep reinventing yourself and you're on social media? I mean, you are not, this is how we used to do it, Guy. You are, you are right there in the mainstream, which I have so much respect for. How do you do that? Because a lot of people kind of have that, oh, I'm just going to do it this way, and they don't really embrace what's happening. Oh, it's probably fear. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I actually, I had made a, 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 a little short list and stuff, and, and um, it's interesting you brought it up, because I put five things I think voice talent shouldn't do. Oh, and, good. And you know what number one is? 
be unable to accept change. Uh-huh. Mm. Oh, and we didn't talk about this ahead of time. It's so important. Mm-hmm. I, th- I don't know where Bob Holtz is today. I hope I hear from him someday. I remember I mentioned why you and not him. Yes. Talented, talented guy, on camera, off camera. I don't know. A lot of the people that I've known over the years disappeared. Now, some disappeared into becoming celebrities, like Bill Macy, good buddy of mine. Mm-hmm. God bless him. Yeah. Uh, William H. I'm sorry, Bill. So, yeah. I know it's Bill Macy. But, uh, and some got out of the business by choice, but many just sort of didn't change. Mm-hmm. And I can remember having a conversation with a friend of mine at a SAG meeting. And the person who was running it at the time was the uh, a pontificating actor. He referred to Screen Actors Guild. He would not say the word SAG. SAG, he said, was something that happens to women's breasts. Oh, in a meeting. I said, how do we not turn into the dinosaur to my friend Steve King, who still works and is in his 70s, and he's my friend. Um, He said, we won't be like him. Hmm. And actually, it was true. I like change. I, I, this, it, it's, it's the nature of it. Yeah, we all resisted initially. Oh, my God, i got to learn how to have a home studio or i got to do this or whatever. But I don't think you have a choice. And people talk, actors talk about typecasting. Oh, you want to be typecast. What's wrong with that? I like the word cast a lot. <laughs> and yeah. if you want to cast my type, yeah. I'm a happy lark. You want to hire somebody to do 25 year olds? You're going to hire me anyway. I love, I read one the other day, a guy, he's easily in his 60s, and in his description, he says, young adult to senior. No, <laughs> no, you can't. I don't, even if we don't, you know, yes, we don't see ourselves, but you don't have the same rhythm as a young person. You don't have the same uh, sense of humor, the same sense of reading. Mm-hmm. You're still reading a different way. I think it's just, you have to be able to to change. So I will pat myself on the back in a sense that while I was being, you know, lucky as hell to be the bright young guy, I was looking at the guys who were being announcers, narrators. You know, for example, I'm looking at Jim Lewis, who's playing the sales manager, and I'm the young salesman learning from him. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at him, watching him to see what he does, because that's what I've got to do next. I started working older vocally long before I actually got to the age I am now, purposely. I knew I, you're not going to get young, young daddy. I'm not going to get young kid anymore. Well, what's the next logical step? Older. So I started working a little gravelier and a little older, mm-hmm. and I got quite a bit of work that way, right. rather than staying neutral. Oh, I, right. I don't want to be typecast. Bring it on. The funny thing is, but my first positioning statement was the voice of the baby boom which is basically true. I still am. We're just old now. Right, Mm. right, yeah. Mm. I love that. That's fantastic, man. What's number two? Pass the promotion buck. Expect your agent, your pay-for-play site, uh, your manager, whoever. Those are all important things. If you want to talk business, it's, you know, they say, well, thing, you know, important items in my quiver or in my toolbox, whatever. They're very important, but you can't, you can't turn that ultimate responsibility onto anyone else. Right. You come to see Chuck what? to produce a fabulous demo. I hope, and I think you'll agree with me, the people who come in and have a strong sense of their brand yep. and what they represent, I don't mean a clever slogan, they have a strong sense of who they are, mm-hmm. are going to turn out the best demos because they tell you, I want to portray myself in this way, Chuck. Yeah. This is what I do. Yeah. So if you pass that promo book, yeah. You're going to fail. That's Three, great. act like a clueless actor. In other words, learn some basic fundamental business. If you tell somebody you're going to build them, you build them immediately. Mm-hmm. Not, oh, yeah, man, I meant, oh, I didn't say you build. Oh, shoot, I was so busy. I was on a shoot. That nonsense doesn't work. You have to be businesslike, and particularly if you're going to make any money and come up against the IRS, <laughs> yeah. you need to get some business jobs. I think it's really, 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 really smart to go to the local junior college and take some basic marketing classes. Mm-hmm. In addition, everybody can take an acting class and learn how to be a tree or something, but <laughs> you need to take, you know, I mean, you want to give up. This is sacrosanct. You've got to... Uh, but, you know, the difference of a weeping willow to an evergreen, come on, Harlan. That's there's no, a fine there line. Is, there is. Well, the evergreen has a whole different sound. Yes. I actually had a spot where they said, Harlan, you're a sweater. 
<laughs> but not just any sweater. Sweater. A wool sweater. A wool <gasps> sweater. Can I have my check? Yes. <laughs> a wool sweater. So that's don't, great. Don't there's no there's a cop out. Oh, I'm just an actor. I can't be business like bullshit. Yeah, I'm and agents sense yeah. it immediately yeah. and they don't want to do business with people who are clueless actors. Uh-huh. Four, don't brag. Mm. In a session, in a recording, around other actors, you want to just and the worst are the newsletters and the emails that go out that say, here's what I've been doing. I know you'd be fascinated to hear what I, see what I do. It's not a newsletter. It's a brag letter. <laughs> it's a brag Bad letter. Bad idea. <laughs> Bad idea. And five, I see this with a lot of voice talent uh, all around the country and not just new people. It's part of our Internet interconnectivity, which is good in many ways, but bad in many ways. And what happens is I see people spending tremendous energy in becoming famous to each other. Mm -hmm. They're on the bulletin boards. They're on LinkedIn. They're on Facebook. They're doing whatever. And they want to become known in the voiceover community. No one, no one, practically no one in the voiceover community is ever going to hire you. Mm. your clients don't give a crap if the voiceover people in the world think you're the greatest thing ever. It has nothing to do with the business. Mm. Now, if you sell to people in the voiceover community, or you have a service in, in Chuck's case or products, sure, then, of course, you want to be known to them. But I see people spending inordinate energies, and they're pretending that they're working at building their career. They're building friendships. Wonderful. Yeah. That's not going to build your career. Mm-hmm. So those are my five at top, the top of my head. That's things. good, fantastic. man. Fantastic. Wow. So great. That's fantastic. You actually put some thought into that, didn't you? Look at you. It's a shocking thing. Look I at know. you putting your thinking cap on. Now, how many people do we invite <laughs> over to VO Buzz Weekly who sit down and 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 hit their brains on the, on the, on the wall to Quite come up with few. great stuff? All of them. <laughs> but thank you for doing it, too. Thank you. That's really... <laughs> there's, a big, there's a big check coming, right? We did negotiate. Yes. Of course. Check. Check's in the mail. Yes. We're just talking with all of your agents. So after the, everyone takes their percentage, you're going to get about seven cents. Um, so, Harley, and you have the second edition of your book coming out this summer, 2014. Can you tell us why there's a second edition and what's the difference? I can. Uh, I wanted mm-hmm. to call it Take Two, but they wouldn't let me do that because mm-hmm. publishers have rules about naming. Um, I hadn't really given it any thought. What I wrote 12 years ago was what was going on. And the reason I, I wrote it was that we had such a crazy group of people here, audio engineers and other actors and agents, and and there were all these stories, because we worked together a lot, and I kept thinking, somebody's got to write these stories down, and realized, that's probably going to be me before everybody dies off, so I asked a lot of the older guys and young about their favorite stories and how they got in the business and all that, wrote it up, wrote up a bunch of stuff with no real organization whatsoever, and... As I went through them, and I looked, I think there's a book. I might, I might make a book. I never wrote a book before in my life, so I start talking to some publishers. I have a couple interested, believe it or not, and <laughs> the one I wanted to go with, all words, said, "Look, we love your book. We like your writing style. Um, some very complimentary things. I really, I like your stories, but." We need some how-to. I said, I don't want to write how-to. There's how-to books galore out there. Mm-hmm. I'm not a coach. I'm not a teacher in that sense. I don't want to do that. She said, well, then we won't publish it because what you wrote was a memoir, and it's really good. And I know you're known in your business, but outside that, the only people who publish memoirs are, have a celebrity status of some kind. So we talked a little bit, and I said, well, how about this? What if I wrote some techniques and tips as sidebars? So we still have the stories, and those, you know, we chatted it through. That's, that's perfect, perfect, perfect. I'm glad I did it because there were some nice things. In yeah. It. yeah. So what's happened in 12 years? Holy crap. Everything's changed. Home studios, I mean, pay-for-play sites, you know, it's, it's multiple agents, quantum changes, yeah. inexpensive equipment. So they called me, and I said, you know what? I would love to do a second edition, most of the changes will be in the techniques and tips because I, here's my thought now. I didn't know it when I was writing it, but I was writing a time capsule. Mm-hmm. We're not going to see that kind of 
that kind of camaraderie, that yeah. kind of you know running from studio to studio, yeah. getting up sometimes, getting a cab and go to a studio at three in the morning, and the singers are standing around to sing "Fly the Friendly Skies," yeah. and you do your <laughs> recording with them. Yeah, you stand in the room with an orchestra. Never going to happen again. Mm -hmm. So I said I wrote a time capsule by accident, and I don't want to lose those. And they agreed. What I did do is took out the weaker stories, put in some newer ones. I found out more information, for example, a lot more information about the Orson Welles recording yeah. after the book was published. The guy who recorded it contacted me from England. I actually talked to him. So I think it's really good. I think people who've read the first book will enjoy the second book as well. And uh, that's the reason. Wonderful. We, we kept wow. the gist of it. I love it. Very, so very so cool. this will be out at some point this summer. And wh what's the best place for people to get it? Me. Okay. <laughs> VoiceOverEssentials.com. No, okay, you can get it at Voiceover Essentials and I'll autograph it, or you can buy it for Great. pennies from Amazon. It doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> they're unbelievable. You know, I authors know. get books at a discount, and if I buy my own book, it's about a dollar less than Amazon sells it for. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. So Go, to the, you Go to the source. Go to the source. Go to the source. You'll get it autographed. Uh, oh. So, VoiceOverEssentials.com. Yes. That's awesome. awesome. Right on, buddy. Congratulations. Thank you for that. That's very cool. Thanks. So check it out. We found out <laughs> that you are a hobby magician, and we were wondering, is that true? Yeah. Chuck loves so, magic. I love magic. I love magic. Love so it. I was oh. wondering, is there a little magic thing you could do for us on Skype? Check? A little magic oh, Skype trick. Friend. How about the paperclip trick? Okay. <laughs> oh, he's ready. It, I have to open the paper clips. Okay, um, talk amongst yourselves. We'll be with you in a moment. So here's here's what I've been working on with the paper clip. So okay. You take the paper clip. This is all mental. Okay. With the power of my mind, I'm bending that metal. Wow. What? Uh, That's uh. pretty cool, man. Right on. Harlan Hogan Magic Hour. I smell right, a second long, career. Long distance, now. Huh? long distance. I want you to repeat to yourself over and over and over again. Okay. Melt. 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 Quietly. Melt. Melt. I think you see something happening. I think you're getting it, Stacy. When you're ready, whenever you take all the time you want. Okay. Normally, I would have you hold your hand here, but when you're ready, say now. Now. <gasps> <laughs> I am speechless. That's pretty good, man. Yeah, and you get you get a seventy-five of them for a buck over there. Oh my god! <laughs> can you, hey, can you get those at uh, Voiceover Essentials? No, you can Listen, get the one little, you uh, just melted. You should be selling on as a fundraiser. The whoever wins the the headphones gets the melted gets paper the clip. melted paper clip. That's, That's what we need awesome. To do. That well, is thank you so for doing crazy. That. That, well, I'm going to go to question number three. Let's That's going to be a hard to, act to follow. Yes, trivia question Whoa. number three, and this is your final trivia question in, in order for you to win these fabulous okay. headphones that Look Harlan's at them. got in the totally cush. Look at that. I love the silver. Oh. I mean, cl first class. Come Harlan. on, baby. All right. In order to attract the attention of voice agent Leslie Schwartz of Stuart Talent Chicago, Harlan A. offered to change the kitty litter in her apartment twice daily. B. Begged her to sail across Lake Michigan with him. Hmm. Mm. C. Asked her to marry him. Whoa. Or D? All three. All three. Wow. These are pretty, uh, these are pretty sexy. I don't know. I'm thinking it's, <laughs> I think it's uh, Casanova Hogan. Yeah, Casanova Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> me. Oh, this my is a family gracious. show. Well, if she's a cat person, you people are after our hearts. Wow, well, that's so, by the way, everybody, we will be posting the, these trivia questions on our website under the contest link. For you guys to have them there just in mm -hmm. case uh, you can't hear 
but you could read. Um, yes. But we'll have them there, and uh, we really want you guys to win, so uh, do a little yes. research there. Well, Harlan, just to kind of wrap this up, we could talk to you all night. Thank Absolutely. you so much. It's getting late there. Um, I'm reading this from our mutual friend Rodney Salisbury's wonderful book, Step Up to the Mic, A Positive Approach to Succeeding in Voiceovers. I'm going to read what you wrote in there. Um, Every actor, willingly or unwittingly, signs on for one of the wildest thrill rides life can dish out, a career complete with the highest highs and the lowest lows. The price of admission is uncertainty, insecurity, and all too often unemployment. In my 30 years as a full-time voice actor, I've known all three. But the work, the work, the work always cures everything. So when the jobs are few and my positive attitude is waning, I find comfort in repeating to myself this simple but reassuring mantra. I've worked in the past, I'll work in the future. I love that. It's beautiful. Thank you. And Thank you. clearly, do you think that that's been the key to your success is your positive attitude? I think so. It's a lot of it. It's a lot of it. And, you know, like anybody, you know, there's been those times when uh, you run into the bank trying to figure out how to pay that bill and not pay the other yeah. bill. Everything, you know, everything in life situational where you are. But again, I mean, I say this over and over again. I've been so lucky. So lucky. Find something. I love my dad worked in the steel mill. He hated it. Mm. Um, so many of my friends hate what they do. I love what I do. Yeah. But I am willing to put the work in to get a chance to play. And that's my thing about the work of voiceover work. Same thing for any actor. Look at all the auditioning a stage actor does to finally get a chance yeah. to go play. And it's, it's, you know, it's what we do. And it's, I think it's really true. The work is everything. And work begats work. Mm -hmm. The more you work, the more people you meet. Um, I always found how often I would audition back in the day when we auditioned live that I wouldn't get that job, but I would get another a job from that producer a week or two later. It was really refreshing with my story about the Swiss company mm -hmm. that that can actually still happen today where they heard my audition, obviously liked me, yep. knew I wasn't right for what they wanted or what the client wanted, but remembered me. Mm -hmm. So... I can't think of anything that's more fun. I mean, what could be more fun than this? So they'll, you know, be, they'll be prying the microphone out of my hands. Uh, one of my heroes in the business was a man named Russ Reed. And Russ started as a kid, about seven or eight years old, in soap operas in Chicago, which were done here originally. Mm -hmm. They went to New York later on, but lots of soap operas were done here. And Russ had a career up until the time he got now to 89 years old. Worked, worked worked, always worked. His, his positioning was Russ Reed sounds like people. And Russ was a bit of an anomaly when he was working because we're actually not dissimilar voices. Um, he just sounded like a regular guy while most people were, you know, putting a hand over their ear. Yeah. Well, Russ, his wife passed away. He had a wonderful, wonderful career. He lived in a beautiful place on Astor Street, so he made money. And he was in a nursing home when one of the producers here was producing the Bible, Old and New Testament. Everybody worked on it. It didn't pay much, but it was fun. And they needed Lazarus. And somebody said, is Russ Reed still alive? So they called Joan at Stewart Talent. And Joan said, yeah, well, he's, he, he is alive. He's very frail. He's in a nursing home, but I'll ask. And Russ said, absolutely. <laughs> so they got an ambulance. They put wow. him in a wheelchair. They... Two guys, it wasn't, it's not handicapped accessible like most studios. They carried him in, set him down, put the microphone down, gave him the script. Mm. He read it. The engineer said, we're done. He said, no, no, I want to give you one more. <laughs> he gave him a second take. And I said, Beautiful. can I say these words? I, I said, how was Russ? And Bob Benson said, absolutely fabulous. <laughs> I hope I can follow in that footstep. I hope I'm talking. They're dragging me to the, uh, to yeah, the final booth. Yeah. Hang um, on, one more, one more. <laughs> we incredible. believe, we believe that that will be the case. And thank you Absolutely, so much buddy. for joining us from your beautiful home. And thank we know that um, there is just the sky's the limit. Thank you for all you do for the business and for all you do for everyone and Absolutely, in the man. community and beyond. Yep. We wish you so much yep. abundance. Yep. Thank you so much. You are much. so talented and so gracious, and we are so honored that we had the chance to have you on our show, Harlan.
Thank you. I appreciate that. You got it, buddy. It's an honor to be I I was really looking forward to this. I wish I could get out. I'll get out there next time. Next time yeah. you come, I'll Because then the three of us will go to the Magic Castle where I'm oh, a member. You know it. And, and you, you know it. you'll see some real stuff. You know it. Don't even okay. joke about that unless you're serious because oh, no, he no. will get the suit and tie ready. Absolutely. It's ready to rock. <laughs> serious. It's That's the only rock. time Chuck wears a coat and tie. Yep, the magic absolutely. Castle. Yeah. You do have to wear a coat and tie, but it's worth it. It's Abs- worth it. it worth er- yeah, absolutely. Well, listen. Thank you so thank much, Thank you so Harlan. much, and we'll see you guys next time. Hi, Harlan Hogan here. I just got buzzed with Chuck and Stacy, and they actually stayed awake. We had a wonderful time. Thanks, guys. Well, all I have to say is that Harlan Hogan has got to be one of the coolest individuals on planet Earth. He's pretty amazing. Jeez. So amazing, and I love that the technology lets us be close to him that many thousands of miles away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you guys, keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest at VO Buzz Weekly. And remember to get all those questions answered correctly so you can win those headphones. And even if you don't win the headphones, there's a little surprise gift for you just for entering. That's right. That's how we roll. That's right, baby. Hey, you guys, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time. And just remember, you you always have time for a little buzz. Wow!